Oh, sh I was supposed to cut that part out. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Wait, who am I kidding here? There aren't any chicks that watch this show. It's just a bunch of 13-year-old meme lords. Anyway, no matter who or what you are, welcome back to Watching in Action. I'm your host and benevolent overlord, Sir Boosington Feenuckle, and today we're taking a look at the Sekura Penta. The Sekura Penta is a launcher-type weapon in the syndicate version of the Penta. It can be purchased from the parent sequence at a max standing for 125,000 reputation. Also note that you need to be Mastery Rank 12 to use it. If you aren't allied with Perrin Sequence, you can always trade this weapon with another player who has it. You still need to meet the Mastery Rank requirements, though. The Sekura Penta is a fairly large upgrade across the board from its non-syndicate counterpart and features various stat increases across the board, among those being increased magazine size, fire rate, and higher base damage. But wait, Bows! This weapon came out eight months ago! Why are you doing a video on it? You might be saying, to answer that, I'd say shut up. I wasn't doing YouTube at the time and I'm catching up on stuff. Deal with it. Back to the weapon, this thing is quite the monster in the damage department and a decent alternative to the Tonkor that requires less forma to max out. But it does suffer from a few glaring issues. The first of which being, as you already saw, that you can kill yourself with it and fairly easily, I might add. Even if you have a Chroma Ice Tank build such as myself, or you're using Link or Blessing with Trinity, nothing can save you from being too close to the blast of this weapon's grenades. Secondly, it has no critical or status chance to speak of, meaning that for late game engagements, you'll notice that the damage severely falls off. All that aside though, it's still an amazingly fun weapon to use if you can get used to it, and at just about anything under level 70, the Sekura Penta is pretty much gonna clean house. On top of that, you also get the added bonus of having the Syndicate proc sequence. Sequence, when triggered, causes the weapon to explode outwards, dealing a thousand radiation damage in a 25 meter radius while generating a guaranteed radiation proc. It also partially restores your shields and gives you a hefty 50% shield boost for 30 seconds. Like most syndicate weapons, the Sekura Penta comes lavishly polarized with several polarity slots out of the box. This is great because even without investing forma, you can get a pretty good idea of whether or not you're gonna like this weapon just by simply throwing a potato on it and leveling it up. It also means that to get a great build, we're not going to have to drop 6 Forma into this thing. Now as for the mod setup, we'll be going with some basic rifle mods to start, meaning that Heavy Caliber, Split Chamber, and Serration will definitely have a place in this build. Adhesive Blast is a player preference mod, and you can pretty much sub this out for just about anything. I use it because it guarantees my grenades will stick to a surface, making it easy for me to not get killed by them if they were to roll around, where I could lose track of them. Note though, that they don't stick to teammates and will bounce off. This weapon is what I would call a pure damage weapon, and as such, I've dedicated the entire bottom mod row to fitting elemental mods. The impact damage on this weapon is only for when the grenade actually hits an enemy. It's not factored into the explosion, so adding physical damage mods is a waste. This weapon will always have blast damage, being that blast is its primary damage type, so I usually reserve the first two mod slots for whatever element I want, and use the last two to enhance the blast damage by using wildfire, which increases magazine capacity and adds heat damage, and cryo rounds. You can sub Wildfire out for any other 60% elemental mod, or throw in a 5th Forma to fit another 90% elemental. I don't feel like this weapon needs that much of an investment, but you may disagree. Here in the Simulacrum, we can see that my claims of this weapon falling off against higher level enemies are partially true. This is a corrupted gunner, and they're notoriously hard to take out. With no status or critical chance on this weapon, it'll be really hard to chew through their high armor and health. Against lesser enemies though, we can see that the Sacrapenta can still hold its own. And that about covers it for today, guys. I know this weapon doesn't have the critical capabilities or high status chance that some of their weapons do, but it can be a lot of fun to use, and the Syndicate proc it emits makes it pretty fantastic. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button because I really need the validation of internet strangers to survive. Also, it helps out a lot on YouTube. YouTube. Additionally, if you're new here, consider subscribing. It's free, like America, until Trump gets elected. And as always, thank you so much for watching.